Welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we have continued working on the Wagtail social networking project. It's a proof of concept. We've been working on a feature for chapter membership, which means that people can join regional chapters of this social network. It's primarily geography based, but these chapters can also be uh, hypothetically other um, affiliations so or affinity groups and so essentially they're groups um, but it's more formally called a chapter in an organized uh, network yesterday we left off um, with a sort of less than stellar user experience um, with the wagtail instance selector uh, for a few reasons, but mainly that you can't really select an instance without editing it. And I don't believe that um, editing is the primary use case for a, a selector or a chooser. So, you know, I opened an issue 15 hours ago, didn't get a response. I'm not really, I don't have high expectations there. But I was like, how else can I solve the problem? It's a natural question to ask. What's another way I could uh, solve this in the short term? And uh, turned out um, on further research that the under the Wagtail organization, uh, there's a Wagtail generic chooser uh, with recent activity. You know, 50 commits. It's not a huge um, package, so it's not a lot of lines of code. But the primary author is Matt Westcott from Matt Westcott, from what I can tell. So that's a good sign. Uh, it's been around for a bit, you know, a few bumps here and there, I guess, uh, be, being a small package, you don't have to have uh, concerted effort and maintenance like you would. And it's had a few other contributors. Uh, so for those reasons, I think it's kind of mainly that it's or under the Wagtail organization uh, but and the core Wagtail developer. For those reasons, I believe it's a relatively safe bet. It's used by uh, over, you know, around 38 or 38 other projects. So that's good. So essentially today we just went through and swapped out the um, chooser and I'll show you what that looks like. So from the chapter membership uh, page, I can edit a membership and I only have one user here, me, uh, but uh, it just lets you create a user, but I, I actually need to implement that. The create tab shouldn't be showing up. Let me just try something real quick. I don't want to dive straight into the uh, code, but uh, anyway, I'm not going to fiddle with that. This is a summary, <laughs> and you basically you <laughs> excuse me, you select the person, the user, um, and it just takes you right back to in place editing. This is exactly how the um, page chooser works. You just select it, and it puts you right back in in the, the form editing, uh, inline editing. So you can just continue with your submission there. That's it. So it should be really streamlined like that. I, I like the user experience. And it didn't take many lines of code. Um, the documentation is um, fairly comprehensive. And it's a bit fragmented. You have to jump around or kind of know what um, how to connect the dots a bit, but I think all of the major dots are there uh, with the brief, you know, few years of experience I've got with Wagtail. I haven't gone into depths of defining uh, widgets and how um, admin uh, URLs and views sets work and things like that. This has got me slowly into that um, level of the Wagtail framework. Let's go ahead and dive straight to the code and I'll try to keep this brief. So to add this um, to the project, it, it only took a few major changes. So aside from installing it, um, you know, generic chooser, we added it to our requirements file. There you go, I'm telling generic chooser. Then you have to essentially define four pieces of code. You define what's called a view set, which is going to let you query a table or a, a model. So I guess it's going to return all instances with some pagination. 
Uh, I don't know if you can override the query set to have a subset, but in the case of the user select, I believe um, that all users uh, would be fine to return. I'm also just thinking, uh, realizing that it didn't have a search widget. Uh, at least I noticed that. So that can be problematic if you've got thousands of users. Straight off, so the previous one did have a search uh, box. All right, so perhaps this one could be extended, allowing you to search for a user in line, like right up here. And I'll figure out how to fix the create tab. I've just got to continue moving on. And essentially, and it's also not displaying these fields related to the user, which is something else I'll have to figure out. It's uh, this would imply that on the modal dialog, I should be showing some other fields here, but it's only got a title field. I'm not sure exactly where that's coming from. Uh, so the view set just returns the data though. So I think I'm getting a little bit ahead. And obviously you can see that I'm not fully comprehending how this thing works. And then you just need to register that view set uh, with Wagtail and give it a name, user chooser and URL prefix. So internally, I believe Wagtail is going to, it's going to send some data to this modal dialog, which then will be prepared and rendered as a select widget. So that brings me onto the widgets. And this could be where I would, I would define the columns and title and uh, what to display. Similarly, I might be able to disable the edit or, or get the edit um, or add slash edit to work. This is the basic implementation. So you, you define a, class it inherits from admin chooser and it essentially takes a model. So I'm just uh, using the same name for consistency and you give it some texts, which also I didn't notice. Oh, I see. Yeah. So if I, this could be a day different person. And if I reset, yeah, so that, that would allow you to swap it out since and that's actually more appropriate text because uh, another would imply you can maybe have multiple selection, but this is choose a different person. Makes sense. Uh, although the text was in line with, with the hmm, default page chooser text, which I'm not sure how to override. Uh, that's it, but you essentially just, you know, you define your texts here I'm using uh, this translation utility so that we could come back and translate these. And you tell it, this is probably the key, is where to get the data from. So we've got that user chooser view set that we registered. And then the choose endpoint. When this wasn't clear. I skimmed the documentation. I didn't read it word for word and I didn't look at the code. So admittedly, that might have been made clear in the docs, but it also could be something that is just um, implied through the example, which uh, can be a little bit problematic for connecting the dots and getting a richer understanding of how things are working. So I don't know, I don't have any specific um, suggestions on how to improve the docs other than maybe an end-to-end -end example. Um, of the most probably common use case, which I believe is adding this um, to a model as a widget. So the final thing is we um, import the user chooser into our membership model. And for our user field, which is a foreign key to the project user model, we render a field panel for that field, but then we can override the widget with this user chooser widget. So that's the key. And um, again, apologize, apologize for uh, not being able to explain this very succinctly or clearly if uh, I've added confusion, but I think this code is a working example of how to use this project. And overall, I think it's uh, been a good uh, developer experience. I've noticed a couple shortcomings like not having the search field, not having clarity on how to override uh, or display other columns. I'm sure that it's possible. I don't know about the search field and also disabling the creation tab, which doesn't seem to be working. So maybe there's some configuration I'm missing there and I don't see an edit button here. Uh, but this is the user experience I was looking for. And I, if I could just disable those, this other tab that might be sufficient to reduce kind of confusion on the end user.
as a developer, I'm kind of um, more, I don't know, impervious or uh, immune to some of these little UX defects, but I know that we need to polish those uh, as an end product. So that's it. Thanks for uh, joining. This has been a CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. If you're interested in getting involved in this project or other similar open source projects, stop on by CodeBuddies.org. CodeBuddies is also an open source project, so this CodeBuddies platform is under active development. You can contribute there. You can also participate in Hangouts to live code and learn from one another. Hey, Sharma, sorry if I missed your message. I'm just doing an outro. A <laughs> good day to you as well. And there's also groups that allow uh, further uh, organ organizing these live stream Hangouts. Uh, into specific topics such as Python, CSS, Ruby, etc. So if you don't want to just join, if you're not interested in one topic like Android development, you could join the game development group and just be updated when um, there's new activity in that related subject. All right. Well, again, thanks for stopping by Sharma and I uh, hope to see you. I hope you're doing uh, good with your Wagtail consultancy and I'll post this um, the live stream video and the summary video so you can just watch the summary video should be relatively short have a great day and stay safe out there